So we're diving back into the Hartlepool by-election. And like I say, all eyes are really going to be on this town for, you know, the next couple of weeks. But the big question after our last episode, which went over and briefly covered essentially the ongoings in Hartlepool and setting the scene, you might have to ask the question now of, well, who's standing, who's thinking about standing, and who has the potential to actually win? So today we are going to dive straight into that, and we are going to find out uh, who's standing, who might be winning, um, and the interesting part about the Reform Party, because it looks like um, there might be a candidate standing, and what's even more worrying is that the Conservatives maybe even considering standing aside to let this guy get elected. This is indeed quite a worrying development if that turns out to be true, and something that we are going to have to watch definitely later down the line, especially at the next election, because if the Conservatives think that maybe they can't win certain seats, but maybe they're they're essentially the, the the populist party of the of the conservative party think that they they can win with the reform party or the brexit party you know pick which one of the name they're still the same thing uh might win then they might stand aside and that could change the potential landscape for the next election and it's something we are going to definitely definitely have to keep an eye on so uh, before we jump into today's article then, please do remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page and my one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And like I say, as always, thank you to all the people who do support me, whether you go to the links down below or, or you just remember to, you know, hit that like and share button. As they say, every little helps. So, on to today's article. And this comes from the Northeast Bylines. So, the title is simply... Who wins Hartlepool? By-elections can sometimes be a bit lacklustre. A bit of a foregone conclusion. But we haven't had one for a long time now. And the next one, coming up shortly in Hartlepool, is set to be absolutely world-beating. There is already a Wikipedia page dedicated to it, which makes interesting reading, if not always for the right reasons. At one time, an election in Hartlepool was slightly less interesting than the shipping forecast. Not anymore. Here is the current state of play as we currently understand it. Richard Trice of the Reform Party has stated that he is thinking about standing. And at one point suggested that the Tories should stand aside to allow him to win the seat. The Conservatives may be currently weighing up his offer as they haven't yet announced their candidate. One name has been mooted, Nick Oliver, a councillor from Northumberland, but nothing more. UKIP, the, the hither unto known uh, Northern Independence Party, and the SDP. Yes, you thought they became extinct in the 1988, but it didn't, they're still alive. Have also declared their intention to field candidates, although none have yet been named. Gemma Emmons of the Women's Equality Party has declared that she will stand, although she has made it clear that the purpose is to put pressure on the other parties. Labour in particular will, will adopt the policy demands of the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the Women's Equality Party, and this rather sounds as if she'll be happy to talk to Keir Starmer and possibly Lisa Nadley at a push. But no one any further down the food, food chain than that. Teesside Live has also announced that a local independent, Samantha Lee, will also stand. Labour has, uh, has also declared that ex-MP for Stockton South, Paul Williams, is also their candidate. The selection was made extremely quickly and has upset some people in the party, and details of an inappropriate tweet from 2011 have also been reported. Williams has since apologised for it, but he remains the candidate nevertheless. We should also point out that elections in Hartlepool have often attracted a relatively large field of candidates. It is also the case with by-elections. Put the two together and the list and the final list of candidates may turn out to be quite bewildering. 
The last time there was a by-election here in 2004, it attracted no fewer than 14 candidates. But even before all the candidates are named, the party has already definitely started. Teesside, uh, Teesside Valley Mayor Ben Houchin has also been leafleting with the Conservative Party Deputy Chair Amanda Milling last week. Amanda Milling later labelled Paul Williams the arch remainer in a newspaper interview in an, in an expectation that in, uh, that in a town like Hartlepool, this will be seen as tantamount to being labelled a serial killer. Or passing interest uh, to us, however, was that uh, was that what was precisely on the leaflets they were delivering, given that the campaign hasn't really started and they don't yet have a candidate. The answer dropped through the letterbox here just a few days later was yes, it was Tees Valley Matters, a leaflet celebrating the achievement of Ben Howden himself. And even Wikipedia has joined in on the fun uh, with this comment about Williams. He was labelled a parachute candidate and critics and sorry, criticised for his pro-EU record in a constituency that voted to leave the European Union by an estimated 70 percent, except that the alleged source is an article in Politics Home that doesn't actually say that. Nowhere else uh, is the term used of parachute candidate and in any case uh, was published before Williams's nomination was even announced. At present, we have no idea who the author of that Wikipedia entry actually is. And whoever is responsible for the Wikipedia entry knows that any reference to a parachute candidate is a sensitive subject in Hartlepool. As at one time, this seat was so safe for Labour that Peter Mandelson had no prior connection to the town, could be elected here without difficulty. This practice, however, is not the preserve of the Labour Party. The Tories do it too. For example, the last Conservative candidate for Barnsley, my area that I was standing in, was from Dorset, down south. It, literally, she turned up once in the town and that would have been like the first time she'd ever turned up. So, again, this isn't a practice that is unusual. It's becoming something of a, a mud-slinging tactic. But it doesn't really work because the Tories do it all the time. <laughs> So, uh, but they have never had yet the inclination to do it so yet in Hartlepool. And oddly, the criticism was not made of Richard Trice when he stood for the election in the town in 2019. However, the question is, is the only major candidate is let to declare where Williams, what are Williams' chances? We will start the things are what were in his favour. In the age where the average politician uh, can talk a glass eye to sleep. You can't make a toast or change light bulbs. Uh, someone with like Williams, who is gainfully employed in the NHS as a real credibility, and the NHS is perennially popular anyway, which always helps. The fact that he works at least some of the time in Hartlepool Hospital makes it even better. So the parachute candidate jibe starts to look faintly ridiculous, even given that one of Liberty Street's plans currently is the closure. Uh, is in Hartlepool. The Shadow Business Secretary Ed Miliband demanded last week that the government should step up to save the industry and, and that will have done Williams' cause no harm at all. Many will see any steps that the government now takes to rescue the Hartlepool plant, which employs around 250 people in the town, as blatant electioneering. Which has to be said that the recent budget bonanza which saw the Treasury jobs and the awarding of a Freeport status arriving in the region will have little direct impact on the town. Any electorate in which uh, many remain in indignative about sympathy with Labour may also be encouraged uh, by the arrival of Keir Starmer, Keir, Keir Starmer, not Starmer, Keir Starmer as party leader. That the infighting with the Labour Party also appears to have subsided under his leadership will do Williams' prospect no harm at all. So, uh, other things, all, all things being equal, Williams may reasonably expect to retain those voters who supported Mike Hill in 2019. The problem is that Hill didn't have a real majority at all, as the combined vote of the Conservatives and the Brexit Party exceeded his, and is well, and it is Jenny will do well to remember that as this was also the case with Hill's predecessor, Ian Wright, who won the seat in 2015 with a similar, similar majority vote share. On that occasion, he opposed uh, 
the opposing vote was shared between the Conservatives and UKIP. So the declining of Labour in Hartlepool is something of a long-standing case. So can Williams regain some of those lost votes? Remember here that there are no polls. No one has ever canvassed the opinion of Hartlepool's electorate. So there are a lot of unknowns. Amanda Millian clearly has a finger on the pulse when she labelled Williams an arch remainer last week. But Brexit is now a done deal. Can Williams still be de demonstrized as branding him an arch remainer? And the answer will probably be possibly. Many of the most ardent Brexiteers simply can't lie, uh, simply can't live with victory. What is unknown about Hartlepool is the ratio of permanent uh, monikers to people who were happy with the outcome of the 2016 referendum and now want to move on. One clue to the continuing influence on the far right is the upheaval at Hartlepool Borough Council in 2019, when a group of councillors who had been elected as independents de defected en masse to the Brexit party and took control of the council. What was the reaction from people of Hartlepool? No, relax, no reaction at all, they just left them to it. And there is a risk that Hartlepool's electorate will simply carry on the Brexit wars then when the opposition candidates need to encourage people to look beyond that. If Williams pictures himself simply as the safer pair of hands to protect the NHS candidate, he opens himself up to the charge of being herded all before. Being, the, being safe but lacking aspiration. And snapping uh, at his heels is the Tees Valley Mayor, Ben Holchen, who has plenty of aspiration to offer and who will be standing beside whichever Conservative candidate turns out to be. Some readers may have already spotted that there's a whole lot of smoke and mirrors in Hutchison's visions for the future of the Tees Valley. And some people in Hartlepool may have noticed that they don't see to seem the future heavily in it. And at least at present, but Hutchison nevertheless is a familiar face with a big message. The default setting for the standard Labour candidate is just to attack the Tories and talk about the NHS. That message is unlikely to start a stampede of Brexit party voters back to Labour. Winning over Hartlepool demands a bit more imagination than that. So that's where things currently stand candidate wise. And like I say, it is no doubt the last time there was a by-election, there was 14 to 15 candidates. That's a lot of people for a by-election. So by the time things get announced, who knows how many how many candidates will there will be. Like I say, we will keep an eye on the situation in Hartlepool as it develops. And like I say, we'll see how things work out because this is going to be a massive test for Labour to see what they can do. And my big problem here is that Labour could drop the ball. And the problem is if they take that attitude towards the next general election, then they will drop the ball at the next general election. So... If they lose, then we have to push the party that there has to be significant changes. They have to start offering what Labour stands for. And that means they have to put out policy. I don't know how many times I've said it over and over and over again. But that's the way it stands. So, as always... Uh, thank you for watching. Please do remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page as well as one-off donation link. And as always, we'll see you all next time.